Okay, uh, so I explained a bit about uh, how we get the uh, geometric mean. In this case, you have one dollar here, up one hundred percent. So you have, your money is two dollar, and then you going down by uh, minus fifty percent. Your return in the second period. This is the T zero, T one, and this is your T two. So you have two. Uh, period where you put your money into the stock. In the first year, your money grow to $2, so you have your return is 100%, and then in the second year, it's going down half of that. So from $2 that you have, you end up with $1. So if you start from the T0, you see that your money doesn't really grow and stay the same until uh, end of the second year. So how you get the geometric mean? Okay, this is how you get that. Uh, 1 plus R, G, you put 2 here because there's a 2 period here, 2 years, and then you multiply, you plus your 100%, this is your first year, and then times 1 minus 50%, this is your second year, and then you got 100% times 50%, you got 1, Plus, so you got 200% here times 50% and you got 100% here. So your RG become uh, 1 uh, minus 1. So basically it's 0. Okay. Um, Alright, so your RG is, your, your geometric mean is 0. Okay. The, the, the big question is, when you look into the future, okay, here, this is the point of when you do your financial modeling, okay, so you're standing here, and then you can look at the historical, or oh, you to the future. Okay. The big question is, nobody in this world that we really expect that your your expected return will be zero, right? Your expected future return is zero. Rate of return. So you don't really expect your money doesn't really grow. So why you have zero here? Back to this uh, uh, calculation that you know that uh, so RG when you got zero it doesn't make sense. But however this geometric mean still be useful when you look to the past because this geometric mean give you a benchmark. One rate become what we call constant rate of return. Okay, so in the historical, if you look at here, your return will be in each uh, period could be the actual each period rate of return will be low, high, and you need one benchmark, one constant rate of return. This is given by your RG, your geometric mean. So if you look at, so geometric mean is useful when you use to evaluate your past performance. Because this gives you one rate, one constant rate of return as a benchmark. But when you use that for the future, it doesn't make sense. Because based on the calculation, it doesn't make sense if people because people when they put the money here, they expect the money will be growing in the future. It, it means that the present value from your cash inflows should be higher than the present value of your cash outflows. Okay. So now we are left 
Uh, and another uh, logic, uh, the finance logic why you cannot use the RG when you look into the future is based on this, uh, uh, I give you the illustration, the same like that, you have one dollar here, up to become two dollar and going down minus 50%, become one dollar here, 100%, this is two periods, uh, this is your T0, T1, and T2. So you have two period, two years investment, and you see your money doesn't really grow. Based on the calculation, your RG becomes zero. In reality, it really uh, depends on how you see this, because um, as a manager, uh, this is what I call like an untouched by human hands. So we don't have any involvement, but as a pot active portfolio manager. Basically, you can do something on this. Okay, you actively, when your money up from one dollar become two dollar, you can pocket the one dollar here. So basically, you can pocket. Uh, you you, the increase one hundred percent. You pocket one dollar. So your 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 investment stay one dollar here, and then when it goes to minus fifty percent, your money become zero point five percent. Okay. So you end, you stay with uh, you start from one dollar, you pocket one dollar here, and then but at the end of the the day at the end of the second year, your money only one point five dollar. So you lose your money zero point fifty dollar. So you pocket one dollar minus one fifty uh, fifty cents, you end up with fifty cents. Um, the value of your money. So, if you divide by one dollar, because you start with one dollar, and you divide by two, because there's a two years, basically, your rate of return is 25%. So, it's not a zero, but 25%. It could happen because during this period, you can do something. You can add or you can subtract your investment. So, instead of untouched by human hands, you can do something. That's why, uh, based on this logic, the arithmetic uh, mean rate of return is more finance sense when you want to use that to the future. So this is a forward looking. And based on our calculation, the expected rate of return, the expected rate of return is 25%. Okay? I'm going to um, move to the next video. Hopefully, you understand why we cannot, why the geometric uh, mean rate of return is useful when you look into the, the the past, the historical records of your performance of stock. But when you want to for use that as a to, as an estimate to the future, then you cannot use the geometric uh, mean rate of return. But instead, you have to use the arithmetic rate of return because that's the unbiased uh, estimate. Um, uh, that you can use in the forecasting okay I'm going to move to the next video where I want to show why arithmetic mean is more superior than the geometric mean okay thank